Alrighty, hey yo, what is up knights? Hey, just Rick here, bringing you guys episode 13 of DFO Account Dailies. Now guys, I've gone ahead and looked, and one of my more popular videos is my Account Dailies uh, series. And the last time I did one was actually back at the uh, start, post 100 cap edition. It was right 100 cap came out. It's been a long time, obviously, since then. It's We, we are basically almost a year into 100 cap. I think we're 10, 9 or 10 months into 100 cap. Uh, and what do the account dailies look like now? And I think, you know, this might be a little bit interesting. My opinions have changed. Well, not really opinions. I still think that, you know, all the dailies that existed before still exist today. It's just kind of the priority that you have. You know, I don't have all the time in the day to just do dailies every day. And that's kind of the thing. You want to kind of capitalize on what you can do every day. So that's kind of what I'm doing in this series. So let's just go ahead and start. First thing first. Uh, this character right here is actually my arid uh, battle pass character. You guys can see pass character, my female striker. I just felt like she can get the most out of it. And it's really important on your battle pass character to make sure that you do the season rewards. And I think this is something that I think is going to be appropriate if you have a season character. If you have the royal pass, you've got to basically do what it tells you. Okay, And that's kind of the thing that I really like about the battle pass. I kind of talked about this in the podcast, but the battle pass opens up the door to things that you might not do normally, you know, this character's already pretty much in the midst of getting geared for Sirocco, uh, so she already has her epic set, a decent epic set and stuff like that, but even yet, the battle pass is telling me, well, you need to farm uh, Basement of Pain, you know, you gotta farm 2 plus 2, uh, you gotta do, you know, raids, you gotta do <laughs> Fiend War, Prey raids and stuff, you gotta do all this stuff that normally I haven't been able to, to or haven't had a reason to do, and now all of a sudden I have a reason, so, um, Go ahead, go back into doing this. Also, this is not just a bad place to farm in general as a daily. Let me go pick up that skeleton key as well. But this is not a bad place to farm as a daily. Um, you can still get mythics, of course. And if you don't have a great mythic already, or if you could have a potential to get a better mythic, then this is obviously an option for you. I don't know if this is going to kill or not. She so don't have great awakening damage. But yeah, you know, you, you can still get mythics here. You can get epics, and epics are really great, even if they're duplicates of the ones that you have, because if you gear up alts or something like that, or if you're trying to gear up an alt, you can either use that, well, for two purposes. You can get fragments towards crafting towards other pieces of gear, and you also get an epic soul out of it, so that's already uh, 20 time guide stones that you can put on another character on your account. So, yes, getting useless epics, even on characters that are already geared, 2 plus 2 is a great way, I mean, you can really consider this as, like, a free hell mode, you know, so... Uh, free hell mode for 100 cap. Not to mention, if any of the gears drop off the bosses, they can, uh, I believe, they have the chance to be cursed. Don't quote me on that, but at least the ones that come from the bosses. I'm pretty sure the ones that come from the Dungeon Clerics reward don't count towards that, but I think the ones that drop off the bosses can still be cursed, so there's that option as well. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of opportunity to get epics out of 2 plus 2, and then uh, even if you're graduated like this character is, or you know, in the midst of getting graduated... Uh, is still useful for that reason too. So. I will be doing this on other characters, but not for the purposes of this video. Just know that it is something that is still viable to this day. Well into 100 cap, it still has its purposes out of it. Uh, you know, just consider it as a free homo. This is the best content that you can afford to do in a daily type setting, if I'm being honest. If you really want to progress your character more, don't forget 2 plus 2, guys. Just don't. <laughs> There's a lot you could be doing, but this is one that you cannot ignore. If you do nothing else in the day, is what I'm getting at, do this. So There's also a lot of other stuff. Well, I mean, we'll get to it by the end of this video, but there's also a lot of other stuff that I recommend. I didn't have any skills for this guy. You know, I'm more focused around the types of uh, things that you're maybe thinking of when you think account dailies. You know, yes, this is an account daily, but there's some other things that are like daily turn-in quests. I don't want to forget doing those. So let me go ahead and finish this run, and we'll go focus on that. Gosh, I feel like I'm repairing my weapons all the time, man. It's like they constantly have to repair them. It's annoying, really. Luckily, there's an event going on right now where, you know, you're getting them for a lot cheaper. Or they're free. So there was our 2 plus 2 runs. And again, uh, we can check our iron battle pass. We've probably got some quests that we got to do. It's important to really look at this because sometimes there are quests that you can't just do without thinking about them. You know, here's, I got to do a couple of Guide of Wisdom. We will be doing a couple of those. Uh, but not now. Disassemble equipment. Well, I can do that. Let me repair my gear first. And then, you know what? Let me actually use the repair coupon since I have a bunch of those. Repair coupon. Disassemble a bunch of equipment. Which I 
happen to have quite a few. And now you can see Battle Pass stuff, missions. Okay, then we got to do Guide of Wisdom. And then the Season character, uh, one more day of the base on a pain, and I'll have those quests. But I can't forget to do this other stuff. These are more just not necessarily account dailies, but just stuff. Don't forget to do these, obviously. So except the daily missions, you got to do those. So anyway, there's other content that I want to recommend. First and foremost, guys. Uh, well, 2 plus 2, first and foremost. But there's some other stuff that I do as daily turn-in, okay? I've talked about this many, many times. Um, I don't know how many people of you guys still have Carnelians, but if you do, like I do, <laughs> on this character because I keep forgetting to turn him in, uh, go pick up these DI boxes from uh, Toby here, you know, and get you Demon Invitations. Now, Demon, Demon Invitations are awesome. They are an awesome currency uh, if you care about gearing alts, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any guild coins on this character because I've been doing it quite a bit, but pick up this Demon Invitation box from this guy as well every day. He actually gives you 60 Demon Invitations. And then, you know, after I do that, I actually teleport over here to the Valley of the Fallen Souls. There's some content here that is worth doing. First and foremost, I like doing First Pit. It's a very, very time efficient uh, way to get clear cubes or gold if you're interested in just selling all the items that you get for gold. But you guys can actually see here, here's my Discord tech for doing this dungeon. You guys can see here, I'm actually getting items as a reward down here. A whole bunch of white and blue items that I can, you know, like I said, disassemble or sell to the NPC. And it's going to be really useful. The problem is, after this floor right here, you can actually afford to just leave the dungeon. Because if I keep going through, all the rest of the floors only give you these sky, uh, shining sky fragments. Which, if you're not worried about getting Tabers geared, which most of us are not caring about 95 content stuff, uh, then you only care about the gear. Here you can see doing those couple of rooms those four or five rooms give you all of these items and you can just take these disassemble them or sell them if you want and you can just get yourself a quick easy bit of you know clear cube fragments or just money it is so fast to do those four rooms highly recommended to do at least those couple rooms uh, for those white items and if you want to do the whole dungeon to get the sky fragments you can do that as well next thing i like doing is um here the spirit heaven which, if you don't, I mean, I always have to explain what the Spirit Heaven is, but um, a lot of people don't care about Dress Up Fighter as much as I do. Uh, but this place is for Dress Up Fighter online. So if you want uh, a weapon that no longer exists anymore and you want to wear it as like a cosmetic effect, this is the dungeon where you farm it. So this is basically where the, the stockpile of non-existent weapons exists now. You can get them randomly as drops from the Spirit Heaven, which is kind of awesome that they have a system like that. Uh, so that we don't like lose these items permanently they're still available even if they get rid of them from the game there's been a lot of items they've done that to things like uh you know transcendence weapons and you know you get these pots and here was the reason i wanted to talk about why it's still important to do it you know nowadays is that okay even if you don't care about like these boss unique weapons that don't exist anymore like like okay i got this pretty cool looking Skaza's Ice Katana, you can't actually get that in the game anymore and it looks kind of cool So that's the reason people do this content But okay, say you don't care about any of those and you already have you know You don't you don't care about your character's look you can get luckily sometimes this soul pot Which always has an epic item in it and now it takes the look of an epic item that is either low level or doesn't exist anymore and the cool thing about that is that you can actually disassemble these and all the items that you get from these pots, you can actually disassemble them for their equivalent souls. And because I have this, you know, dagger here, which uh, looks kind of cool, but I'm going to go ahead and just disassemble it. But, you know, if you disassemble it, you actually get an epic soul for it. So it's just like, hey, free epic soul, free 20 time guide stones for somebody else on my account. And, you know, if you like the looks of some of these items, you can, you know, that's, that's why you do this content to get that. But, you know, you can get a lot of epic souls that way, you know. Just got an epic soul just straight up without even having to try for it, uh, basically. It's a cool looking totem. <laughs> Do I keep that submarine totem? That is kind of cool. But now nah, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. And so yeah, that's why I recommend doing that. And uh, I would say Tower of Dazzlement, but I have been very, very, very lazy on it lately. Uh, the cool thing about Tower of Dazzlement, it's mainly farmed for uh, rare and unique cards, which you can upgrade into random ones. Uh, by doing that, but then you also have the ability to get legendaries and epics from this dungeon as well They actually just drop straight up. So uh, if you have been doing it for every day of the week It's also recommended, but I have been pretty much 
Or I missed it this week. Anyway, I, I didn't manage to do it, so I missed out on it. So there you go. The last thing that I consider as a daily on a character, because this is kind of how this series goes, is that what I like doing is just turning in those important daily quests and doing them as a daily type of thing. And then I move on to the next character. So that's kind of the thing. There's a lot of things in this game which kind of like are daily turn-ins. And... You know, they don't take more than a couple seconds to do. That's why I call them account dailies is because, you know, you just sign in for a few seconds, do them, and then next character. Or, you know, sign off if you only have a couple characters. So, this is the last thing that I consider pretty much a daily type thing. I think doing Donnie Crevice is still important to this day. I know a lot of people don't care about Donnie Crevice. But if you're the type of person who's gearing up characters, and I am gearing up characters still, you know. I have eight characters who are Sirocco ready. I want to gear up four more. Um, so to do that, I need to get these epics, and I need to get these time guide stones. You know, I'm gearing up my mistress now. And she's now doing a lot of the content that my striker, you know, basically how my striker geared up when the start of this gap, I'm doing the same thing still on my mistress. And I think this is still a really viable dungeon. I've heard people shit talk this dungeon saying, oh, it's just for... For the cheapo, like, you know, noobs or something. This is this is dungeon do. Uh, no, I, I am a veteran player. And to this day, I still do this dungeon because it's really good. And I, um, I've talked about this a hundred times. But just so you know, uh, that dungeon can drop epics straight up. But even if you don't get epics, you get aberrant crystallines. Every 500 of these is equivalent to one epic soul. But you need a legendary level 95 to do it. Which we're going to need to farm... Uh, the emblem of heroes to get enough. Uh, I think you need 400 emblem of heroes and 500 aberrant crystals to guarantee yourself a level 95 epic, which is equivalent to, you know, 20 time guide stones again if you are converting your epic soul. So I'm gonna go ahead and just showcase because I've showed this a few times and it's it's always so fun to do this honestly. Uh, but yeah, my female striker has a perfect build for farming those uh, metals. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of my gear to do that. But yeah, you farm the metals uh, here in uh, Assault Mode, and you have to do four dungeons of these. And some characters are obviously better than others when it comes to this. So basically what I recommend is, you know, you don't always have to do Donning Crevice. Well, I, I do recommend doing Donning Crevice every day if you can really treat it like a Hell Mode. But you don't have to do Assault Mode every day. You know, this is not something I do every day. I don't do Assault Mode every day. Uh, and that's mainly because the exchange rate is... Uh, you know, not one to one. What's holding me back is not the assault mode. It's actually the Donning Crevice, the Aberrant Crystalline. So I can be a little bit slower in farming my emblems here, Emblem of Heroes, than I do the Aberrant Crystalline. So you don't always have to farm this, but I do recommend characters who are very fast at farming this, like my female striker is. I have a set dedicated directly for this purpose. Uh, if you have a character that is fast at farming this, I do recommend doing it every day. You know, what does it take but a couple seconds, just like all the other daily content I've been showing off, uh, for these types of characters, you know? And there are really good characters for this purpose, you know? <laughs> Most likely you're geared characters, but it doesn't have to be. A good example is uh, basically any character who has a uh, cloth shoulder. I don't know if this character does. Let me showcase what this does. Ah, it does. Okay. So any character who has a cloth shoulder uh, can become a very good assault mode farmer. Okay, let me show you why. Uh, basically, you don't have to have any damage. All you have to do is be fast. Okay, and the reason why is because, well, any enemy that you get near dies. <laughs> Here you go. So you guys can see, even without any gear or damage whatsoever, as long as I have the move speed, which is also why I recommend picking up, if you're going to be doing this, pick up these speed shoes that I'm not even wearing. But the full plate uh, armor set, this is a level 85 armor set. It's also really good for doing this because your move speed increases so much. And uh, yeah, look at how fast this is. I'm, I'm not even using any skills. I'm literally just running into guys and they're not. <laughs> okay, the mini bosses, I don't think I can do that on. But yeah, so, uh, you know, oftentimes on my Crusader or something, I'm just wearing this armor set. And I'm just literally walking through, guys. So there you automatically have a character uh, who is going to be really efficient at doing these dungeons. You know, and I'm talking even Seder. I, th I think my Seder is actually really good in here because, you know, just cast your speed buff and just keep running. <laughs> so, yes, it is kind of cheesing the older content. Yes, it is a little bit of a roundabout way to get epics, but still completely viable in my opinion you know, it's not something you should be ignoring just because it's old content and there's a lot of dailies or or things that i do especially if you show up onto the stream that are not relative like they're not the stormy route they're not the 
you know, things designed for this cap, but it's still relevant in this cap, you know. You can still make it worthwhile, especially if it only takes you 15 seconds to do it, you know. You can do it on multiple characters, and it really would not take that much time out of your day. So switch back to your normal stuff before you start doing raid content again. I always forget to do this, but, you know, it is an option for you. I'm going to put this back here, but, uh, yeah, highly recommended for me. Uh, farm assault mode definitely Don and crevice assault mode if you have the opportunity uh, or if you have a character that can do it really easily I do recommend it still too so that's pretty much all the dailies I got I mean there's more that I can do on this character for instance I think I got okay I got a few refined terranium not as much as I recommend you basically need 15 refined terraniums a day if you take those to the NPC up here Jonathan and uh, you trade in I do recommend every day on one character on your account to purchase the essence of the wrist and two vestiges of hope that's why i need i need actually five more refined terranium but buy this every day do it okay because it's really an item that is absolutely worthwhile to get even if you're not selling it in the market it is worth it in the marketplace but it's also worth it just if you're trying to gear characters up this uh, essence of the rift is used to uh, basically take the curse off of your gear and apply an amplification onto your gear and then you can actually use the vestige to convert that amplification to another gear check out my guide videos on basically all of the gearing systems that exist in the game uh, if you want to see all the details of that because i talk about that there but trust me pick that up that's another daily that i highly recommend another one that i still pick up daily is the glowing magatama because i have so many of these and uh, you can actually pick that up if you're wondering okay here's a discord tech um if you're wondering like if you see any title and it doesn't have an enchant they're kind of sandbagging you know why is because there is a title bead that you can pick up in shonen which i'm going to show you guys right now here's the discord tech okay you bother to watch this video let me teach you something uh every title in the game should have at the very least this three elemental damage enchant. And you get that enchant from, uh, well, shit, I thought you got, got it from her. Who do you get it from? Oh, she sells it. Okay. Woo here is selling it. I could have sworn Oscar sold it. Anyway, they moved the NPC. But the point here is, guys, don't sandbag. Pick up this white, uh, Yellow Dragon's white Biju bead. Uh, it is a title bead, and it is the best in slot option if there doesn't exist one for your title already, okay? Uh, there are some titles that exist, a uh, good example, like, you know, when this title released, this EX Doppelganger title, it had an aura that went with it. Of course, it's not going to beat this, because look at the elemental damage and other stats that you get out of it. But if you don't have an enchant that goes onto your title, pick one up, okay? And you can pick one up, actually, at that NPC uh, there in Shonen. So, don't sandbag. Basically, call anybody out who doesn't have an enchant on their title. Tell them to get this bead, Okay. Tell them to get the white bead you bead. Uh, and you get it from doing that daily quest that I just did. Uh, and you can also get another one by doing another daily quest by actually doing the Suju tournament. But that's besides the point. That's why I turn it in all my characters. That's why I actually have a large surplus of those. Kind of hand those out as gifts for any newbies I see walking around with no enchants. But don't be that guy, okay? Don't be that guy who sandbags and doesn't have that enchant because it's free. That shit is free. It's level. It's been free since level 70 cap, so I don't want to hear it. It's You better have that shit, period. Uh, and that's how you get it, really easy. I'm going to go ahead and do more pit. Now, you only get access to this dungeon three times a day. Well, I'm three different characters, so... Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I would say that my Elven Knight is not the fastest I do in this dungeon, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It took like five seconds either way. Again, same kind of deal there. Just go ahead and take it to a disassembler. And boom, done. Um, so I forgot to go to the guild hall, which again, I recommend on every character to do this on. Go to the guild hall beforehand and pick up your demon invitations, which again, some of these characters, which I have done this every single day on, does not do not have the, <laughs> the, the medals, but that just means I've been very diligent about turning those in. But even on characters like this who absolutely do not need epics, do not need mythics, uh, it would be worthwhile to do 2 plus 2. But at the very least, you know, I'm, I've been on characters who are really geared and if I don't have a lot of time, uh, then I just go ahead and do Don and Crevice because it's like a faster 2 plus 2. If, if I'm really only treating 2 plus 2 as like a place for me to get epics, this is like a faster version of that. It only takes me, well, it's a lot shorter than doing 2 plus 2, obviously. So, 
you know, if, if I'm really hard pressed for time or if I really want to run like 30 characters through hell mode uh, to get epic souls for my other alts, then I'll just bring them all through DC. I do think that 2 plus 2 is more is, is better, is more relevant to the cap, obviously, because you're actually running content that is level 100 cap, cursed gear, the uh, the fragments, the epic souls are, are better. Anyway, uh, or the, the epic fragments are better because epics are better. Anyway, it is better to run 2 plus 2, it just takes more time. So if you only care about the epic souls, Donning Crevice is where it's at. I always say it, it's a free hell mode. Don't ever, don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise, guys. This place is, is free. Uh, in more ways than one. Uh, if you stack up a bunch of Aberrant Crystal Lanes, you also got to compensate by also stacking up a lot of Emblem of Heroes, which means that, you know, some of these days you're going to have to take a little bit more time to farm that Assault Mode. So I'm not going to do that on this character. I'm just going to move on to the next one. Easy. Now, as uh, my character limit starts getting uh, reached in content, like, for instance, I've already ran three characters. I didn't show off my third, but I've already ran three characters through the Valley of the Fallen Soul. I basically don't have to go there anymore, but... I'll just showcase what I'm talking about here. Go to pick up this, and this character actually gets a DI, and you can see I have a good, decent stockpile of demon invitations um, building up on some of these characters, but I don't actually have any more content that I need to jump over here to do. I've already ran my three there. Um, I would do this if I didn't uh, screw it up this week, but, you know, no reason for me to go there anymore. So basically, the rest of the dailies just involve my choice of doing Donnie Crevice and or doing... Uh, 2 plus 2. So that's kind of how the dailies are looking, guys. I'm going to keep doing this. So just to showcase that maybe, maybe one of these characters will get lucky and justify all this time I'm spending in here. But you got to realize, guys, even if I walk away with no epics shines, you know, like no epics drop, I still walked away with the W because I got a whole bunch of fragments towards crafting an epic guaranteed, you know. And so that's also the thing that you got to remember is that even when you fail, you're not really wasting time. 500 Aberrant Crystallines, if I get an, or sorry, 50 Aberrant Crystallines, you do this five days in a row, you're guaranteed an Epic. And that's if one doesn't just drop right, right for you. So, um, easy. And then you also get the critical drop sometimes on the Aberrant uh, Crystal Fragments, which is also huge. Uh, you know, I've done this for a while. I haven't done this as much as I could have been doing it. I could have been doing it way more than I have, but... Uh, to showcase, 20,000 Aberrant Crystallines just waiting in my account save. That's from all of the critical drops that I have dropped from all the bosses that I've... Or all the times I've killed this boss uh, over the years. <laughs> it's been years at this point. Huh? How many times have I wrecked Molek, yo? <laughs> like, my guy is just sad. He's like, there comes Rick again. My daily beatings from Rick just coming in here and just fucking me up, so... Um, that would be repeated over the course of many characters. Now, I did mention, okay, something that you're going to have to consider as a daily is kind of tied to what I said earlier about uh, Jonathan. So if I go back uh, to Pandemonium and go to Jonathan right here, uh, Jonathan, you want to be able to pick up these Terranium items every day, okay? And so this my, my Paladin is a perfect character that I sometimes use to stockpile refined Terranium. Um, and so if you are getting low on refined terranium, you're gonna need to farm it again And that's something that I would consider as a daily I do consider Jonathan as a turn in daily, you know And if you don't have the 15 terranium today, you need to build up a stockpile That means you need to sacrifice a couple characters and bring them through some terranium farming content Now there's a lot of terranium farming content uh, That a lot of people like farming, you know, some people like doing uh, Prey dailies some people like doing uh, disaster sector three uh, some people like doing you know what else is there you know there's just other places where you can get refined terraniums here's what i recommend personally i just think it's easiest to do ds3 to be honest with you guys <laughs> ds3 is just yo did i just get my skill canceled that is whack uh, ds3 is just my my go-to favorite place to farm so because it just doesn't take that much time you know it is you can argue the other ones don't take that much time either you know, doing prey dailies and stuff like that. But you can also just blow through your entire FP bar here much faster and you don't have to worry about signing into other characters and, and managing it on multiple characters. No, you just play one character the whole time and you just constantly get knocked down by this very annoying gimmick. <laughs> this one sucks, man. But, uh, yeah, you know, this is something you can kind of just go through your entire FP bar on. You don't have to worry uh, about, like, 
playing multiple characters just to get enough uh, refined terrariums. I think that's what you're going to have to do if you're going any other route, really. You get a lot more refined terrarium, but it does cost you a lot more. It costs you a lot more FP and stuff like that. So the other places are maybe more FP efficient, but if you're like me and you just have a million characters and you don't really care about your FP, you just want to get it done, I think DS3 is, is a place that I recommend. You're going to need, I think, two characters constantly farming this dungeon uh, to be able to buy uh, the items without regard for what day it is so i recommend farming two characters through here and build up a stockpile that way and as long as you have two characters dedicated to ds3 every once in a while i think you're going to be set pretty much uh, obviously you don't have to do it but you can see basically i got how many here 27 so that's almost three refined terranium in one run you know so do rec recommend doing this 27 three refined terranium basically have to farm this i don't know four or five times five times i guess to get enough uh refined terraniums to cover me for the day and it only took me a couple of seconds so this is something i do actually consider a daily if you don't have the refined terranium so bring a character um who can do this really easily you know or bring your strongest character but you know it might be a consideration to bring a character who is especially good at it you know, it is possible to make characters who uh, are completely focused around just having a build just for DS3. Uh, the same way that I kind of showed off my striker is really good for assault mode. You can make a stronger character that's maybe more focused towards doing uh, disaster sector, you know. And some characters are actually really good for disaster sector. My paladin probably isn't even my best character for this type of content, you know. I have people like my ghost boy uh, who are really mega good. I think my mistress, who I'm currently gearing up right now, is actually going to be a pretty decent character for the AoEs and stuff that you need. But, you know, you can actually make your sweeping wave viable, I think. You make your sweeping wave strong enough to be able to do this in one shop. In which case, Paladin, again, amazing character for this content, if that's the case. Um, but yeah, whatever your suggestions are, you know, I wouldn't say make a character explicitly for that purpose. Just use your best character use your best judgment on which character you want to burn through their fp the only caveat i have here is that again don't expect to do much else with the character after you do ds3 okay so make sure you take care of all your other stuff that you're planning on doing first okay if you're farming you know oculus if you're doing pandemonium war things that take fp uh, if you're doing the new mount exiles or whatever that takes fp do not under any circumstances do ds3 until you're done with all those other things because you're just deleting your your freaking fp so you can get some terraniums and you guys can see here i already got 12 so uh not bad not bad for a couple seconds so um do recommend doing that as a daily it is something that um i think that jonathan stuff it's gonna be really prevalent later i know that right now <clears throat> it is really it's not it, it isn't like necessary but in the future guys uh, amplified gear is going to be something that's going to be a lot easier to attain at high levels you guys can see here actually a lot of my gear already is amped you know it's not amped to high levels but i think getting high levels is going to be much easier to attain later on and you want to be you know get a head start on that and i think getting this every day is going to prepare you to set your character up set any character you want on your account for for amps okay um, and there are a lot of methods to get amps almost kind of deserves its own video if you you really think about it but there's a lot of easy ways to get amps me amping up my whole palette in here was not that challenging uh, considering how many hells i did so uh, but there's a lot of ways to get amps and you, really to complement that you have to be doing this as a daily as well so if you're even considering amps which you should be because of the patches coming down later down the line um get these early you're you're gonna be trust me you're gonna thank me well down in the future that you did that because the problem with jonathan the npc jonathan is that you ha can only buy a certain amount of that stock every day you know and the more days go by that you don't buy it you're just kind of gimping yourself unfortunately so guys uh we already know my top eight characters that i rate on they're actually down here <laughs> they're actually rightfully placed okay the top five they're already pretty much heroic or ready some of them like my ek and close to be my brawler are actually graduated but um my monk my male satyr and my enchantress are also basically getting uh, sirocco gear the four characters i still have yet to gear are actually right here my secret agent my miss well my mistress first secret agent second dragon knight third and i'm actually going to be gearing chaos so if you haven't been to the stream your boy got baited into chaos um but yeah i'm thinking about doing that too but 
Uh, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump to the character I'm most focused on because depending on whatever your situation is, whatever character you're actually gearing on, that's where you want to focus most of your daily attention to. You know, so you want to make sure that you pick up on the main character that you're playing, you know, your Neo Premium contract. If you have it, don't forget to pick that up because you get a free run of the Guide of Wisdom. Uh, you want to be doing dailies on her as well. But the problem is you also got to balance it with the hell modes. You know, I have been funneling resources onto this character in terms of, you know, the epic souls and all of that. Uh, but you want to funnel, you, you basically want to balance your, your day around this character, okay? So, uh, I've already done it this week, but just to explain what I mean, you know, this character, if I was farming my talismans, which, as you guys can see, I've already taken care of that, but if I was farming my talismans, talismans requires me to farm, well, depending on how strong you are, you know, you, you're going to be farming the, um, well, actually, no, i got to leave channels. Uh, you're going to be farming the Pandemonium War, right? So, you have to go to the Pandemonium War, it, it takes FP, that is a daily you have to do. This is not optional if you're trying to gear up uh, in this game. If you don't already have your swap set, you know, you have to spend a little bit of FP and time to get that, you know. Focus your dailies on doing the things that you got to do to improve your character, you know. Um, Insignia, it's pretty much free. You don't have to worry about that anymore. But yeah, the Talisman Dungeon Farming, you have to do. Uh, this character actually just finished up her ditto set. So you guys can see here. I can open this up and select my ditto, but that required me to do Oculus. So uh, you have to do Oculus Raid. That also takes FP. So something that you want to do. If you're you know, raid ready or trying to get raid ready, then you might have to be considering uh, doing raids. And that actually doesn't take any FP, but that's something that I would consider as a daily. Also, uh, I should be picking these up because I'm almost at the cap on the things here. So let me grab these and you know, yet other things that I'm using to funnel uh, resources onto this character to gear her out. But, you know, make sure you focus on those dailies because, uh, well, I guess weekly entries, whatever. Things that are important before you start going ham on the hells. And that's kind of the thing is that on this character, once you're done with all of your, like, weekly type entry stuff, the last things you really have left to do are, as we already showed off, 2 plus 2, as well as hell modes afterwards. So I think... Basically, I've covered everything that, you know, constitutes dailies for me. I'm basically starting my day off now. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how it is. It's like, okay, which, whichever character I'm gearing, when I get to that character, now I'm done with dailies, which I obviously haven't done D all of the DCs and shit I wanted to. But now we're on to, like, things that have to be done on my main, on, on the character I'm gearing. I guess, uh, not my main, but, you know, the character I'm gearing, so... Yeah, 2 plus 2 necessary on this character because I'm gearing this character. and This is kind of where the day starts. After this, I'm basically just going to be doing Hell Modes permanently. So, guys, I think that's about all I really have to say about the DFO account dailies nowadays. I mean, it's a lot of the same since last time, I think. You know, I think a lot of the things are relevant. I think some things maybe take more priority in terms of the focus. Um, but in terms of what I recommend you do as a, as a you know, somebody who's trying to gear up a character uh, these are the things that I do to kind of supercharge my account my other characters on my account you know I do all of this other content uh, even lower level content on you know my main still so it is something I recommend to kind of boost up any other character that you're bothered to gear and you can just kind of change that to kind of suit your level of gear or your level of progress in the game um, but yeah, that's about it. You know, I didn't talk about everything that I normally always talk about. There are other things you could still do, you know, um, other content that are more like, they're not really dailies, they're more like weeklies, you know, stuff like, let me change channels real quick. Um, you know, you have to still, I recommend doing Pandemonium Meeting. Um, Dark Dimension, going in at least one time a week is kind of recommended. It doesn't take that long. Uh, P War we already talked about, and don't forget your Joa Ferrero weekly dungeons as well. So, um, and if you need to, I mean, this is not daily type of content, but Curse Ruby as well. Uh, just some other stuff that I would recommend doing. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That was my DFO account dailies, and quite frankly, not much has changed since the start of Hundred Cap. I mean, yes, we have gotten new content, but in terms of how to funnel resources and what you should be doing if you're trying to gear a character. Not much has changed. Just kind of a sort of a reminder to don't forget to do all this stuff, guys. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I will catch you nights.
later.